Hello everyone. From time to time, I get the question, what is up with the Guardian Medivh? Is he alive? Is he having adventures without us? Will he play a role in the future? And my short answer is, unsure. I'm not sure about the fate of Medivh or his role in the story, or if he even should play a role to begin with. We don't need a Guardian Medivh. Then I ask again, why are you here? Let's dive a little deeper and go back. The Guardian was supposed to be Azeroth's greatest defender against threats like the Demons and the Burning Legion. Starting with Elodai, empowered by the Council of Tirisfall, Guardianship then passed on through the ages until it reached Aquin, Medivh's mother. And she, she was a brilliant Guardian, but she was also stubborn and bullheaded in her relations with the Council. Her deep-seated mistrust of authority figures often put her at odds with the Elder Magi. Ignoring the recommendations and advice, Aquin forged her own path, eventually finding herself taking on the Avatar of Sargeras, Lord of the Burning Legion, a battle that she miraculously managed to win. But victory did come at a price, as a piece of Sargeras' spirit, it nestled itself within her, twisting her thoughts, widening that rift between her and the Council even further, until the Council sent out Magi to try and reel in their renegade guardian. None really had a shot against her, except for one, Nilas Aran, Medi's father. Nilas already harbored misgivings about the Council himself. Well aware of the Order's political machinations, activities that he did not condone. In turn, he realized that Aegwyn was not the traitorous rebel the Council had made her out to be. Love blossomed between the two, and plans to keep the Guardian's powers away from the Council's control. They made a child together, a child named Medivh. But little did they know that Sargeras' spirits it now moved from Aegwyn to her infant positioning himself just right, not only getting the massive power up from Aquin, but also having the position of Guardian, the being that was supposed to be Azeroth's greatest defender against Sargeras and the like, it now housed a piece of the Dark Titan within. And so, the corrupted Guardian moved in the shadows, making contact with the Horde and setting up the portal between Drenor and Azeroth, facilitating the Horde's invasion of the world and all the suffering that followed. All that so that Azeroth would be weakened and ready to be taken by the Legion. But his actions did not go completely unnoticed, especially the opening of the Dark Portal. It caused quite a bit of a shock to those with an affinity to magic. After enlisting the aid of her dragon ally Arcanagos, Aegwyn set off to investigate what was going on. After seeing the magical doorway created, they flew to the Tower of Karazhan, where she sought to confront her child, who was busy entertaining many of Stormwind's nobles. After the heated argument, she came to the startling realization that her son was possessed by Sargeras. The ensuing battle between mother and child shook the mighty towers to their foundations, until Aegwyn was struck down leading to Arcanagos' swift intervention. In response to the loyal Blue's actions, the Dark Titan forced Medivh to burn Arcanagos from the inside out, cursing the dragon's skeletal remains with a fiery form of undeath. Fearing that Aegwyn could gain the upper hand, Sargeras drew upon the life energies of the fleeing guest in a desperate bid to end the former guardian. Yet in that most dire moment, Medivh managed to claw back control from Sargeras, teleported Aegwyn away to safety. Whereas Arcanagos, or Nightbane as we would now call him, to this day, he still spotted from time to time. Then, there was also his young apprentice Ketgar, Young Trust, who together with Gronahav Orkan and Enduin Lothar, they figured out what was going on, what Medivh had done. Again, that, that human side inside, it, it manages to take control from time to time, move pieces into place to do what needed to be done, just as the uncorrupted part hoped that they would. Ketgar was nearly killed in their final confrontation, as Sargeras tried to rip his soul from his body. When that failed, he drained part of his life force. The apprentice was prematurely aged, a young man who become old and wizened, and yet it seemingly had no effect on his total lifespan. In the end, it would be Ketgar who buried a blade in his mentor's chest, fatally wounding him. Striking down the guardian, it forced Sargeras' spirit from his body banishing the Legion's Lord into the depths of the Twisting Nether. But of course, that didn't stop the Horde from washing over Azeroth. And so, our heroes then focused their efforts on trying to save the world, while time passed on and the world would have need of its guardian once more. 
the events of Warcraft 3 are looming on the horizon, where a mysterious prophet goes around, trying to make the people see the danger that's looming in the dark. The Fredder Legion that they should unite against. Not everyone is willing to listen, but enough well-known heroes and forces manage to come together under the guidance of this mysterious prophet. Under the guidance of none other than Medivh. Last night in a dream, a great raven spoke to me and summoned me to this place. We were summoned here as well. Who are you, Outlanders? I am Thrall, son of Durotan, war chief of the Horde. And I am Jaina Proudmoore, leader of the human survivors of Lordaeron. You are not welcome. Peace, Priestess. They've come to aid you against the Legion. It was you in my dream. But who are you to make such an offer to us? I am the reason for the Legion's return. Years ago, I brought the Orcs into this world. And by doing so, I opened a path for the demons as well. For my sins, I was murdered by those who I cared for most. Despite my death, war raged across the lands of the East for many long years, leaving entire kingdoms devastated in its wake. Now, at long last, I have returned to set things right. I am Medivh, the last guardian. I tell you now, the only chance for this world is for you to unite in arms against the enemies of all who live. Aquin had been receiving strange dreams about her son, dressed in a cloak lined with raven feathers. He told his mother that he had a message for the world, and he pleaded for her help to bring him back to Azeroth. Initially, she had been suspicious, believing it to be the work of the Legion. But some part of her knew otherwise. She felt Medivh's soul drifting beyond the veil of reality, and she sensed that it was now free of Sargeras's touch. This was her chance to make up for her failures, to both Azeroth and her son. Calling upon what little magical power she had left, she began her quest of finding Medivh's spirits. Months would pass without results, but she stubbornly refused to give up. She searched for magical artifacts to help her with the summoning. The work was extremely hard but it was also fulfilling, eventually succeeding. An incredible feat of strength, bringing back someone from the dead. It's not as easy as we make it look by resing our raids after the wipe. He wasn't a death knight or an undead either, a full-blown proper resurrection. Medivh then told Aegwyn that while his spirit was wandering beyond the physical realm, he had witnessed many things. His vast powers had allowed him to glimpse into the twisting nether, touch the minds of the Legion's demons. From them, he had learned of the Lich King, the Plague of Undeath, the plans the Legion had with Warcraft 3, while well, Aegwyn urged him to use his guardian powers to save the world. Medivh had other ideas. The world would have to come together itself this time. It would have to learn that it no longer needed guardians. And he actually succeeded. With a job well done, our command blown back to the Twisting Nether, he ended his moment in the story with this legendary line. The roots will heal in time, as will the entire world. The sacrifices have been made. Just as the orcs, humans, and night elves discarded their old hatreds and stood united against a common foe, so did nature herself rise up to banish the shadow forever. As for me, I came back to ensure that there would be a future, to teach the world that it no longer needed guardians. The hope for future generations has always resided in mortal hands. And now that my task is done, I will take my place amongst the legends of the past. His powers were waning, and he felt that his time on the physical plane was coming to an end. 
the task of safeguarding Azeroth, it fell to its inhabitants now, just as he had intended. Medivh had shown them that there was strength in unity. All he could do now was hope that they would continue fighting together as they had done on Hyjal. And with that, the last guardian of Azeroth vanished. Which is what makes Medivh one of my favorite characters. He has a really solid story. Start, middle and finish. A little while ago, we, we spoke about a new generation rising up within the story of Warcraft. And how it's okay for characters to have an arc and be done with their storyline. Sometimes it's okay to let go of a great character. To have them go or, or take a step back out of the spotlight. In the case of Medivh and the story of the Guardian, we already saw them going back on all of this with the introduction of everybody's favorite character. A character called Medan, child of Garona and Medivh. Medan, he had always stayed in the Warcraft comics where he got a big storyline which involved the legendary staff of the Guardian. It involved Chogal, Cthun, Garona, Varian meeting Thrall within Feramor. A whole other storyline that, that someone who just stuck with the games they never really heard about. Now for some, what makes Medan a bad character is that whatever he tried to do, he immediately was the greatest at it. A bit of a Mary Sue, I've heard him describe this, as he could wield the elements, the light, the powers of the Guardian, it all came to him just like that. And everybody else, they became a backup character to support him. Personally, that was not my major issue with Medan. It, it wasn't exactly great, but you know, it wouldn't be the first overpowered look at me go character. What made Medan awful for me is the section where he rips apart the story of the Guardian and its finish at the end of Warcraft 3. Medivh did not just help save the world and rectify the damage he caused. He made efforts. He also showed the world that it no longer needed the Guardian. Mortals have risen up in power, have risen up in responsibility, which allows them to be the Guardians. His role was finished and fulfilled. So bringing Medana to the storyline, making him the new Guardian, it rectified the moral of the story. Feedback that Blizzard also picked up on, as Medan has been fully retconned out of the story with the Chronicles, he no longer exists, which in my opinion is fantastic, but I'm curious what happened to the events that he was part of. Like, a big example would be the death of Aegwyn, that is part of his story. If Medan is no longer around, then what happened to Aegwyn? Did she die during the bombing of Feramor? Is she still around? And we don't really know. And the same question can be asked for Medivh as well, because even though he left us with taking his place amongst the legends of the past, during Legion, we returned to the Tower of Karazhan. As the Burning Legion, it showed up with the biggest invasion as of yet, and they set their sights on the tower once again. I've left so many fragments of myself throughout this tower. Medivh? I will open the way. While you battle that fiend, I will sever the tower's connection to Legion worlds. I suggest we be quick about it. Medivh opens the door to the final boss. Visadun the Watcher awaits. Karazhan's presence radiates through the nether, a beacon drawing in the Legion's light. Our burning crusade has consumed countless worlds. This tower will serve as a conduit to each of them. One battle remains. One final conquest to complete the grand design. But the design was flawless! The demons have been purged from Karazhan. Thank you, champions. Medivh, you would be a welcome ally in our war against the Legion. Oh, my path leads elsewhere. Besides, Azeroth has found her guardian in you, young trust. I have made it clear before. I do not want such power. You have all the power you will ever need, Khadgar. It is your heart, your courage, that makes you this world's guardian. And a better one than I ever was. I... I don't know what to say, Medivh. Enough sentiment. Hear these words before I depart. It may be simpler to shut a door than to pass through it, but sometimes... A step into the unknown is required to break the bonds of fate. 
There is much that lies ahead for all of us. Farewell. The bonds of fate. Hmm. I must consider those words. Until next time, champions. So you would say that this is Medivh, right? How else can we see a walking, talking, former guardian right in front of us? But we do have to remember that we are in the Tower of Karazhan. And the Tower of Karazhan, it's always been a bit wonky when it comes to time and fragments of Medivh. That first line that he drops on us, this is often repeated all the way back in the novel The Last Guardian, where Ketgar buries his mentor, he looks up and he sees this echo of Medivh, he even talks with it. There's always been this, this crisscross of past, present and future when dealing with the madness of the tower. And yet Ketgar, he does ask of Medivh to come help us out in the war against the Legion. If anyone should know how the tower works, how the echo works, it would be Ketka, right? So if he thinks that this being is the real deal and could leave the tower, who are we to say that he is wrong? Now, fortunately, we, we haven't seen Medivh show up again after this moment, so it's hard to say where his path has led him. The whole passing through bit that played out with the Tomb of Sargeras and then the end of the expansion Legion, where we stopped Sargeras and the Burning Legion once and for all. Ketgar does make a clear line to the sand here. He does not want the official title or powers of the Guardian, even though that, that's been pretty much his role so far. But then we still have the question, what about Medivh? Was the being that Refion spoke with, was that another appearance in the tower, an echo that roams its halls, or did he speak with the real deal? It's impossible to say, but perhaps a better question that we could ask would be, is bringing back Medivh really something we want? For me, as I said at the start, The Guardian is one of my favorite storylines, with Medivh being one of my favorite characters, but I appreciate it because the story is done. Even if they give him the most brilliant storyline ever by making him come back, they would still go back on the idea that the world no longer needs a guardian. Now that wouldn't be the first time, of course. We do have dragon aspects again, even though, you know, it was the dawn of the age of mortals. But I hold the same opinion on that as well. I found it far more interesting when the story of dragons needed to deal with their mortality, working together with mortals. Reversing the clock didn't add a whole lot for me to the storyline, and I'm hard pressed to imagine what bringing back the guardian in Medivh or the Guardian storyline, what that could add to what they've written down already. But hey, that's just me in this moment. Who knows, I might change my mind if they actually do a story of Medivh. I do recall bringing back Illidan, which was kind of great, but then with Illidan, I always felt like, you know, Illidan's story could have been done a whole lot better than what they did in the Burning Crusade. I don't know. By all means, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And at the very least, you're up to date as to where Medivh and the story of the Guardian is at. So as always, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, see ya!